In this video, we're going to have a look at how to use Google Sheets to calculate the mean and standard error of data collected from a science experiment, as well as how to present that information in an appropriate graph along with error bars. So what you'll see over here on the left is what we would call raw or unprocessed data. And that's because the results haven't been interpreted or presented in a way that makes sense. Uh, now, Google Sheets on its own is a pretty powerful program, just like Microsoft Excel, and it actually has built into it a lot of formulas and ways that it can interpret and process data. For example, if I select any empty cell and hit the equal sign, um, I have the option to type in something like average, and that would allow me really easily to calculate the average or the mean of a set of data just like that. I can continue to do that for all the columns of data over here and then use that to calculate standard deviation and standard error and so on and so forth. But there's actually a really cool and simple way of doing that and that requires the use of an add-on. So I'm just going to delete that. Uh, if you go onto add-ons in Google Sheets um, and go to get add-ons, if you simply type statistics into the search bar, you'll see that one of the first suggestions is an add-on called XL Minor Analysis Toolpack. I've already installed this, but you should see the blue plus button to the right, which will allow you to um, install this uh, into Google Sheets. Once you do that, if you select add-ons, you'll see that analysis toolpack appear right there. Hitting start will cause a toolbar to appear to the right. This now gives me the option of performing a whole bunch of really, really great uh, and very useful statistical tests on, on data. But what we're interested in today is descriptive statistics. I'm going to go ahead and open that. Descriptive statistics does exactly what it says. It describes the statistics of a whole bunch of numbers. So let me give you uh, an example of it in action. First, I'm going to select all the numbers that I want it to describe. Um, I have to be careful not to select any words because that's not part of the data set. I will then select input range and you'll see that that automatically puts the names of those cells from A3 down to C12 into that input range. I can also manually type it in. I'm then going to select um, an empty cell as my output range. And once I select that, the name should pop up there as well. I'm going to leave everything else the same for now and hit OK. Now that I'm done with this, I'm going to close this right toolbar. And what you'll see is that it spat out a whole bunch of kind of complicated looking information, but that's actually very, very useful. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is rename column one, two, and three with these three words so that it's a little bit clearer there. And you'll see that it's provided a whole series of information from mean, standard error, medium, all the way down to uh, confidence level. Now, what we're interested in today are the first two, which I'm just going to highlight. So the first thing I want to ask myself is, what's the best way of presenting this information? Well, since my independent variable was discrete, uh, in other words, it wasn't numbers, it wasn't continuous, it was categorical, uh, I should be presenting this information using a bar graph. Now, the reason why we did so many replications, of course, is so that we could get the average. And the average, as you can see, was provided to us right here. So the first thing I want to do is select these three numbers and turn that into a graph. Now, Google Sheets can be a little bit funny with this. And so the kind of simplest way I found to do this is to create just another little table on, on the side um, with those three categories and those three numbers and make a graph based on that. There, so nothing fancy there. I literally just retyped out um, those three words uh, and the three values that I got from, from the mean. What I'm going to do now is highlight these six cells go to insert chart and create a pie chart. <laughs> Definitely not create a pie chart, uh, create a bar graph based on that. And there you go. Now I've noticed that this doesn't happen if I make a bar graph that only has two bars, but if there's three or more, uh, there's a couple of things that I need to change just so that Google Sheets displays this um, graph correctly. And it's this, I need to switch rows and columns. So once I do that, it's gonna look a little bit weird, uh, but that's because this other thing changed and now I need to just check again, use row three as headers. As you can see, I want these three words uh, to be the headers in the third row. So row three or whatever row it might be for you. Uncheck this one, use column L as labels. And there you go. Now it's looking right. Uh, it has a legend on the side, but that's 
um, how it has to be presented within the current build of Google Sheets uh, to get this working. Um, so here are my results. It's not completely clear just yet because as you can see, there are a few things wrong. Um, it seems to start with four, which is a bit misleading. It makes the control look a lot smaller than uh, the other two when it, the difference really isn't this much. And of course it's missing some labels. So uh, let's go ahead and fix some of those things. Uh, so here in customize, I'm first gonna go to the vertical axis. Uh, which is um, the y-axis, and I'm going to change the minimum value to zero or to a number that's small enough um, to more accurately re represent the data. And that one, that one does it pretty well. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and just quickly add in some of those x and y-axis labels uh, just because it's going to make it clearer, of course. And that's looking much better. So what conclusion can we draw from this? Well, it looks very much like the red and orange uh, bars have done much better, uh, a lot bigger than the blue bar, uh, except how much bigger that does it need to be before we can say that it actually is a difference? Well, enter the standard error. So uh, this is something that we might have gone through in class, but the standard error uh, gives us an estimate of the confidence that we can have uh, that their mean really represents the sample. Uh, that it's trying to um, describe. Uh, we we want to represent the standard error here on the graphs in the form of an error bar. Uh, and this is how you do it. While the chart editor is still up uh, on customize, um, scroll down to series, and then you want to select um, the bar that you want to add um, your specific error bar to. So let's start here with the control. Now the control, the standard error here is 0 0.7118. I'm just going to go 0 0.7 to begin with. Uh, so highlight uh, select error bar, I'm going to change from percentage to constant uh, and type in 0 0.7. And there it is right there. It automatically creates an error bar that's, that's 0 0.7 higher uh, than 4.2 and 0 0.7 lower than 4.2, which is great. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing for nitrogen and phosphorus. And there you have it. Now, if you don't see um, different options here in the drop down menu under series, so you can't put, you know, different error bars, uh, it could be that um, under data, um, this was still selected, or maybe one of these uh, was selected incorrectly. So you might have to play around with that a little bit. But if you do it right, you should be able to customize a different error bar for each bar. And so here is our completed graph. Why is this better than, than the previous? Uh, now with the error bars, we have the ability to say um, that um, not only is you know this the mean for or, or this and this, uh, but this is the confidence that we have um, of where the mean should lie. Uh, and based on whether the error bars overlap or whether they don't overlap, it gives us some indication into whether uh, we can say with any certainty uh, that one group was actually better than another group. So in this case, I now have a lot more confidence to say that the red and orange conditions, nitrogen and, and phosphate, uh, did a lot better uh, in terms of increasing plant height than the control based on uh, the sample which I investigated. So there you have it. Please feel free to go back over parts of this video if you need to um, be reminded on, on how to do any of these things. If you've got questions, uh, please ask your teacher. I'll leave them in the comments uh, and I hope that was of some help.